will happen is that you'll work through, as you work through the emotional injuries regarding sex, you'll get to a point in your own feelings that you will not be able to feel sexual, sexually aroused without the other half being around. Right? And once that occurs, you'll also, also have some very strong feelings about sexual arousal with your soulmate as well. So I had five years where I, where I felt no sexual arousal, very little sexual arousal at all. And then as soon as I met my soulmate, it just all went haywire on me, right? Because I, because I've dealt with a lot of the emotions about it, I knew straight away, and straight away I was also opened up sexually as well. I, I thought I was just getting old. <laughs> uh, you, you can maintain this kind of, and, and the passion in fact can grow at the older you get. And it's actually the opposite way that most people feel. The reason why when we get old things seem to close down is because we've had the emotions in us for so long. They've affected so much of us that, that parts of our body are now shutting down even in order to deal with our emotional state right, and still remain alive. So it's very damaging all these emotions that we store within us. But understand that the sex... Can you see why sex is a part of your progression? Oh, can understand. It's really important to understand that. It is a part of your progression. Because God created it. And anything that God created in its pristine state is something that is beautiful and you don't need to give it up. <laughs> yeah. If you need to give it up, why would, you know, that does make no sense, does it? Why would God create something in you and then tell you, you have to take it away to be at one with me? <laughs> I've seen not very many people before now have actually said that God created it. It was always sort of hinted as being something else. Exactly, but who created the penis and who created the vagina in the end? <laughs> yeah, but the like, penis, you always have an idea of God being able to say, poof, there it is. Yeah. You don't have to have sex to create it. God can actually just create it without sex. But why would he... Understand it. Yeah, but why would he create it without it being used? It doesn't make any sense either. That's and that I mean, mean, that's on the sex side, but I'm yeah. talking about as a creation aspect of God, God yeah. can create it without sexual activity no every every single time god creates he is having sex so actually the, the, the theory <laughs> no, that, I'm serious. the theory that, that the world the universe came into being by god masturbating and that created the universe was actually half right it was sort of half right god <laughs> god didn't need to masturbate god god was in this god has masculine and feminine qualities in such a union that every time God experiences a desire, and this, by the way, is what you will be in that alignment state with your soulmate, every time you to collectively, together, the two, the two of you, which are now one, experience a desire, you will create in that instance. No way. Whatever the desire is, if the desire is to make a house over there, bang, it will appear over there exactly as you had it in your desire. So we don't have to have any inhibition feelings or anything about sex because sex is actually a divine act. Sex is a divine act. If it has divine intentions. But if it also has love. 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 Well, that's a divine intention. Isn't it? Exactly. It, uh, if sex was created for creation, uh, where do homosexuals be? Uh, they still have sex. Yeah. Like sex, remember, is an energetic transaction. The truth, the truth about homosexuals and, and heterosexuals is that in the earth, on the earth form in the body, while they might not be able to create another ch a child, they in the, in the spirit world they constantly create through, a, through the sex act. Right? Mm -hmm. So if we look at what's happening from a mathematical point of view, about well, you, many of you, some of you are mathematicians, I think, here, aren't they? Some, uh, it might be one or two. But, um, You've all heard about standard deviation, statistics, and all those kind of things? Well, back to the school time, you know. All right. Let's imagine for a moment that this axis along here is the sexuality of the soul in its union state. So, let's call this end really, really male, and let's call this end dominantly female. All right? Now in between there, due to just statistics, there'll be certain ones that fall between the 90 percentile range. And these ones in here will be a soul 
which is, has two halves, and when they split, they will split into a masculine and feminine side. So they will split, split into a male, female dominant <coughs> portion of the soul, which of course will attract a female body for this one, right? And a male body for this one. And there will be an attraction between each other. Agree? Yep. And so you could say sexual attraction is not really sexual attraction. It's really soul attraction between the two halves of the soul. You follow me? Now, when this dominantly male soul has feminine characteristics still, but it's a dominantly male soul, splits, it will split in such a way that the two halves of the soul will be dominantly male. But they will still have an attraction for each other. And this is also why some male homosexuals are feministic. Yeah, well, I'm not that's right. <coughs> yep. Yep. Because there is a mixture of masculine and feminine qualities, but they are together as the complete soul, more masculine than the average complete soul. It's like creation in either of those. Either in. When you say creation, there's only no creation when they have the sex act on earth. Right? But there is creation in many other aspects of their life on earth and in the spirit world. So the, the, the dominantly male soul that's in, say, the sixth sphere yep. um, would be having sex and they would be creating because it's that energy level where they can do that. It's to do with the energy transfer, remember, yep. the feelings, the emotions that are transferred between the two that do the creation. So if God was like a perfect creator, how did he not actually have a 100% ratio of a male-female, is there a design purpose? Yeah, just everything God creates has extremes right through the whole range in, to an infinite degree. Yep. So there is actually an infinite degree of sexuality in the complete soul, not just what I've drawn here. There's, and, and the infinite degree has yet to be experienced even, right, in either direction. And that's how God creates everything. There is an infinite variety of all of God's creatures. There is an infinite variety of all of God's uh, natural cre creations like you know, plants and trees and so forth. There is an infinite variety of all of these things. God is an infinite being and creates infinite variety. And so there is also an infinite variety of all the different types of souls when it comes to gender. So, if you're a heterosexual and you're sort of like homophobic, as they call it, yeah, you've um, got an emotion. Actually, yeah, you actually got to actually understand that, that it's just the way their soul is, their soul personality, design sort of thing. It's not that's that. There's something going on in your childhood that has caused you to have an emotional injury towards that particular gen that particular sexual union. Yeah. And the key is to allow yourself to actually connect with that injury. And it might be an injury of shame about something that happened, something that, you know, with regard to how your parents treated you or how your father felt about homosexuals and you want your father's approval. It can be really quite small like that. You know, I've had situations within myself where I've been allergic to an animal because my father hated it. And as soon as I dealt with my father, with my relationship with my father, my allergy to the animal disappeared completely. Right? So, so understand that almost every single thing that we feel within us was created somewhere in our childhood and we, we just need to release it. In the end, if you're in a state of love, you will love everyone no matter what their sexuality, what, whatever they choose. Whatever they choose. Even, there are plenty of people today on earth who are heterosexual but choose a homosexual experience. And later on they'll work out why. Most of it's because they were injured in some way when they were children. So there are many so-called lesbians today who are together, who are together, but, but in reality they're heterosexual. But they're, they're, they're lesbian on earth because of the injuries they're unwilling to deal with. But that being said, there are many people in a heterosexual relationship that really are homosexual. Right? But actually, when it comes down to it, if they actually have a love for each other, there's actually nothing wrong with it, is it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if they act in harmony with love of themselves, they will be humble and deal with their emotions and eventually they'll find the truth about their own sexuality. Yeah. And I've talked to many spirits who passed, lived like 70, 80 years here on earth, passed over, 
they passed over in the spirit world, been there five, ten years, they've come to have a chat, and in our discussion worked out that they were homosexual, not heterosexual. Yeah. And they lived their whole life as a heterosexual couple with somebody. Yeah. 